Hello, 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 and welcome once again to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel. Let's see what popped up in theaters this week. Oliver Stone returns to his muckraking roots with Snowden, the true life tale of Edward Snowden, the man who blew the whistle on the federal government's extensive surveillance program, which targeted and invaded the privacy of the entire world, including and especially its own citizens. I've got to say, I was ultimately disappointed by Snowden because Edward Snowden is a complicated character, whether you love him or you hate him for what he did. Now, Oliver Stone clearly loves him, and the film is heavily biased towards him, with just about every government character a shady black hat spouting pessimistic cliches. But that bias would be fine. I mean, I think JFK is Stone's paranoid masterpiece, even if I personally believe Oswald acted alone because it's a gripping, well-told story. But with Snowden, I feel like the most exciting, the most interesting parts of the story all get crammed in at a breakneck pace near the end of the film, and the entire movie that precedes it is dull, plodding, and very difficult to get an entry point into. Watching Snowden unfold, I felt a little like Fred Savage in the movie The Princess Bride, getting irritated with his grandpa, saying, I'm telling you, you're messing up the story. Now get it right. Do you want me to go on with this? Yeah. <sighs> all right. That's it for the capsule review. Let's get in depth. All right, all right, let me get this out of the way first. The performances in Snowden are all great. Joseph Gordon-Levitt as Snowden really nails the characterization. Shailene Woodley shows once again that she's better than those infernal divergent movies, which I'm so glad to see that the greedy decision to split the last book into two movies blew up in Lion Gate's greedy little face, aren't you? <laughs> anyway, back to Snowden. Even Nicolas Cage gets a moment to shine here, and he's a lot of fun in a small part. I also particularly admired Oliver Stone's talent as a visual storyteller. He can convey complicated ideas like the single bullet theory or the NSA's data mining programs in a visually fascinating fashion so we can all understand what's really at stake here. So there are some points in the movie's favor right off the bat. And it's kind of going to be all downhill from here. Here's where I find the biggest fault with this movie. It doesn't seem to know where the real story is. The recent release Sully did, it knew it didn't have enough for a full movie, so it stuck the main event front and center and built a movie around it, as shallow as it was. Here, the big event, Snowden, leaking the classified files, takes place near the very end of the movie, which at that point is racing towards its resolution. That's what's interesting, the little miniature heist that it took to get those files out of the secure government building. About five minutes of screen time, people. The planning of that heist, we never see it. The moment where he decided to steal and leak the documents, Never seen, only discussed, the internal debate over what's morally right and wrong about the invasive government surveillance programs. We never see Snowden have it. Why? Because there's not really another character that he could have it with. It all took place in his head. And that's a challenge to convey, even for a talented visual stylist like Oliver Stone. You know, that character in any romantic comedy, you know, the guy's best friend or the girl's best friend, or in some cases, the gay best friend. You know that person only exists in the story so that the main characters have someone to talk to about their feelings, so the audience knows what's going on in their head. We never get any moments like that in Snowden because Edward Snowden never violated protocol by sharing his feelings with Shailene Woodley, his civilian girlfriend. And the only people he talks with at work are usually the nefarious government type who represent the sleazy status quo, or his impish peers who go along to get along. We, as an audience, need so desperately to know at each point what Snowden is feeling, and we're even given the framework for him to do it, intercutting occasionally to his whistleblowing interview with journalists in a Hong Kong hotel room in 2013. But those scenes only really get interesting near the end, when the logistics of publishing the groundbreaking story, under extreme pressure, breathe some life into the narrative. There's your story, Oliver Stone. Snowden had to be smuggled out of that hotel room and into Russia. That's exciting! Why don't you show me that instead of just breezing past it? And by the time we get to it, we spent so much time on his early years in the military, his diagnosis with epilepsy, and his progression from job to job to have any room for the really fascinating stuff. I award Snowden a medium bag of popcorn only because it picks up near the end and supplies some riveting food for thought. But you gotta do all the chewing yourself. That does it for this edition of Movies That Pop. Don't forget to follow me, the Colonel, on Twitter, at Movies That Pop and click the icon right down there to visit our channel. You'll be able to view all of our other videos, and more importantly, while you're there, click subscribe, so you can keep up with all the latest episodes, and so we can keep the lights on around here. Please leave your comments below, and click the thumbs up if you like what you heard. In the meantime, thanks for watching. I'm the Colonel, and they're listening to us right now.